showcasing the muscles of the arm. Each muscle is surrounded by the epimesium. Each muscle is made up of many fascicles. Each fascicle is surrounded by the perimesium. And each fascicle is made up of many muscle fibers. Each muscle fiber is surrounded by the endomesium. Each muscle is surrounded by the epimesium. Each muscle is made up of many fascicles. Each fascicle is surrounded by the perimesium. And each fascicle is made up of many muscle fibers. Each muscle fiber is surrounded by the endomesium. And now we're going to take a closer look at an individual muscle fiber. This is the model of our single muscle fiber. And on the outside, we have a connective tissue covering called the endomyceum here. The endomyceum completely surrounds the muscle fiber. The membrane of the muscle fiber is called the sacrolemma, and we can see that here. Each muscle fiber is individually innervated by an axon that comes down and forms the neuromuscular junction. So this is the neuro part and this is the muscular part. This is the neuromuscular junction here. And we're gonna talk about how the muscle gets stimulated to contract. Parts of the sacrolemma go deep into the muscle and you can see they're represented in the blue here and this is called the T-tubules. On each side of the T-tubule, we have a, a terminal cisternae which is part of the sarcoplasmic reticulum that we can see illustrated in yellow here. The one T-tubule and the terminal cisternae on each side is called a triad. What happens when the muscle contracts is a nerve impulse comes down the axon to the neuromuscular junction. That impulse causes voltage-gated channels to open and calcium rushes into the presynaptic end bulb. The calcium rushing into the end bulb causes the endocytosis of acetylcholine to enter the synapse, the area between the synaptic bulb and the motor end plate. The acetylcholine crosses the synapse and binds at receptors on the neuromuscular junction. That binding causes sodium channels to open, and if enough sodium channel, if enough sodium enters the cell, that will cause an action potential that is conducting along the sarcrolemma and in through the T-tubules. The muscle fiber is made up of many myofibrils. And we can see the myofibrils here. Each myofibril is composed of many myofilaments and we can see the individual myofilaments and now we are going to take a closer look at an individual myofilament. So this model represents a myofilament and the myofilaments are made up of several sarcomeres all joined together and this is one sarcomere from here to here. This covering here, the yellow is representing the T-tubules, where the action potential is conducted into the muscle fiber itself. And the green is representing the sarcoplasmic reticulum. And on each side of the T-tubule, we have the terminal cisternae. So the T-tubule and the terminal cisternae on each side is called the triad. If we remove this, we can see our sarcomere. So from end to end is one sarcomere. This is the Z-disc here, and this is the Z-disc here. In the middle, we have the M-line. These dark blue thick parts are called the myosin, and they have these heads on the end of it that are shaped like golf clubs. 
these are the thick filaments. The thin filaments are shown here in red, which is made up of actin. On the thin filaments, we also have what is shown here in yellow, the tryptomycin, and then we have the troponin, which is shown in green. There are different zones within the sarcomere. From myosin head, from end to end, is called the A band. The I band is where we just have the thin filaments. So since we would have another sarcomere over here, the thin filament, the I band, would be from here to here. The H zone is where we just have the thick filaments. From myosin head from end to end is called the A band. The I band is where we just have the thin filaments. The H zone is where we just have the thick filaments. As the action potential is conducted down through the T-tubules, calcium stored in the terminal cisternae is released into the sarcoplasm. The calcium binds with the troponin and causes a conformational change which shifts the tryptomyosin revealing the binding site so that the myosin heads can latch on and cock. ATP is required to release the head and recock it, and as long as the binding site is exposed, contraction will continue. So each Z disc moves closer and closer together. This is another model, and once again, this is a model of a single muscle fiber. The covering around the outside of a single muscle fiber is called the endomecium. The cell membrane is shown here, which is called the sarcolemma. And then you can also see where the axon that innervates the muscle fiber comes in here, and it shows a nice view of the motor end plate here. If we turn it, so we can see this way, we can see that the muscle fiber is made up of many myofibrils, and that each myofibril is made up of many myofilaments. So now when we turn this way, and we're going to look at this single myofilament. And this myofilament is composed of many sarcomeres that are joined together. So each sarcomere runs from Z disc here to Z disc here. In the middle of it, we have the M line, and the A band is this area right here. So this is where we can see the thick filaments. The I band is along here. So the I band runs from one sarcomere into the next.